السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين ما شاء الله as we near here the end of the days of mercy of course all of the month of Ramadan is a mercy but we know that the month of Ramadan comes in thirds and the first third is the third of mercy I thought we should reflect on the word mercy a little bit more because the word mercy in English does not quite capture everything it has in Arabic. One time, the Prophet وسلم, was sitting with his companions, and this was a time soon after a battle had ended. And there was a lot of chaos in the background and people going every which way and people trying to find their loved ones. And there was a woman, a mother, amongst the people who was searching frantically for her child. She couldn't figure out where her child had went to. And for any parent who has even momentarily lost a child, just momentarily, you know the panic that sets in. And this woman was going back and forth and back and forth looking um, uh, for her child. And anytime she saw anybody else's child, she would take them and hold them and then realize it wasn't her and just keep on looking for this child. And so the Prophet said, I'm turned to his companions and said, do you see this mother? Do you think that this mother would throw her child into the hellfire? And the question was kind of caught the Sahaba by surprise. It, it wasn't something they expected. And so they said, no, by Allah, she wouldn't do such a thing. And then the Prophet وسلم, explained himself and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more rahmah He's arham, he has more rahma for his servants than this mother has for her child. So imagine that. Imagine, imagine a mother who's a parent who's desperately searching for this lost child and how much joy and happiness she regains when finding the child again. And when the Messenger of Allah said, asked the companions, can you imagine, you know, if this mother would throw her child into the fire and they just were sort of in disbelief right they couldn't believe the question right but it was a way for the prophet sallam to explain how merciful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us in comparison to the mother right because the mother's love is a natural love but then you understand that allah's love and mercy for us is even grander and even more subhanallah it's beautiful and speaking of mothers and the love that mothers have, this is no coincidence, of course, that the very place that a child grows in a woman's body, the womb, in Arabic, is called the rahim. And the name for mercy, Allah's name for, for himself, the merciful, ar-Rahman. And if you break down the three-letter root word for each, you realize that they're connected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says this in the hadith Qudsi where he says, I am a rahman and I created the rahim, the womb, and I named it after me, inshallah. An organ in the body and only in a woman's body that is named after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Meaning it shares some of the very same characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman. So even when we try to grasp what does this word mean of mercy? What is the very, it's the very core, it's core to the very nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who he is. It symbolizes, right? We think about the womb. The fetus grows inside the womb. It's nurtured inside the womb. And there's bonds built with the mother and child inside that womb before the child is even born. It is a protective, nurturing, cared for environment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that rahm that he created, he named it after himself. Jalla jalalahu. Subhanallah. Right? And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. He says, Inna rabbakum kataba ala nafsihi rahmah that Allah wrote upon himself, he prescribed upon himself, what? The characteristic of what? Mercy, rahma. It's beautiful, right? It's so beautiful. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he came with his message of Islam, 
and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him was a cultural revolution. It literally changed the way we perceive men and women and human interactions. He took away jahiliyyah, this ignorant way of dealing with each other. He, as a man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, embodied the quality of rahmah from what he learned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be merciful with the people around you, his own family first and foremost, and then all of us as his ummah. And we have so many narrations where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would hug and kiss his grandchildren and play with them and let them ride on his back and tussle their hair and throw them up in the air. All these beautiful narrations of how connected and loving he was to his grandchildren. And one day, and children, and one day, there's a famous narration where a Bedouin man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he saw him having his grandchildren on his lap and playing with them and tussling with them and kissing them. And the Bedouin looked at him disappointedly, disapprovingly, and did not like what he saw. And then he very proudly retorted and said, I have had 10 children and I have never kissed any one of them. <laughs> Can you imagine? The Prophet Sallallahu listened to this. <laughs> and then he said something very important. He said, and what can I do for you if Allah has removed rahmah from your heart? <laughs> As in to say, this thing about men don't kiss children and they don't show emotions and affection, this thing is called jahiliyyah. And we want nothing to do with it here. I kiss my children, I hug my children, I play with my children and my grandchildren, and I show them love and affection. This thing about being a man and not showing your affection, not part of our deen. This is cultural nonsense that we do not approve of. And so it's a cultural revolution that he did. <laughs> changing the way we understand because the Prophet ﷺ was operating from a place of what Allah told him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear and this is what he says in a different narration Man la yarham la yurham. whoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy in the hereafter subhanallah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to show mercy to the servants of Allah, to the other people around us, especially our own family members. And I'm rem reminded how when we first study the sciences of hadith, because people can become very literal in their Islamic understanding, we always say a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing because people become very, you know, literal and very specific and halal and haram and yes and wrong and right. And the more and more and more you study, the quieter and quieter and quieter you get. Because you realize the vast mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the differences of our ummah, right? Ikhtilaf ummati rahma, the differences within my ummah are a mercy to us. Literally, here comes the word mercy again, right? And in the hadith sciences, the very first hadith we're taught as an opening to say to us, look, you're going to be learning all about this deen. And lest you start to become very literal and make it hard for other people, the first hadith we're going to start with is Hadith al Rahma, the Hadith of Mercy, that says, Ar Rahimuna Yarhamuhum ar Rahman, Irham man fil ard, Yarhamuka man fil sama. Those who show mercy, the merciful will show them mercy. That first line is all full of rahmah, rahmah, rahmah. Those who show mercy, the merciful, meaning Allah will show them mercy. So show mercy to those on earth. Those in the heavens will show you mercy. This is so important. It's the first prophetic tradition that scholars of hadith uh, uh, transmission study because it's an intense importance of how you work with people and teach people and understand in the sunnah and the footsteps of the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, of being merciful to people around you, starting always with the family. Charity starts at home, mercy starts at home. 
and then ripples its way outward, subhanAllah ta'ala. And so as we close here for today, just as a reminder, as we close these last 10 days of the days of mercy, to remember that these days are a blessing within a blessing. They're a mercy within a month of mercy. <laughs> Inshallah. And we want to really strive our hardest to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make this an incredibly special month by ensuring that we deserve his mercy showered upon us. And doing this by the good deeds that are multiplied many fold, right? And that all the bad deeds that are forgiven, inshallah, right? And a sincere repentance that we strive to please Allah and Allah alone. So I pray, inshallah, on these days of mercy that we embody the characteristics of mercy with one another, that we are patient with our family members, that we are patient in our workplaces, that we are patient with those all who might annoy us, that we quiet the inner critic within us. All of this is a kind of showing mercy to one another. SubhanAllah, that Allah may then show mercy to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us and uplift us and cleanse us and purify us this month and shower his mercy down upon us and allow us to be from those who inshallah are written for Jannah and have nothing to do for Jahannam. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. This is your sister, Dr. Rani Awad, signing off. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.